The Italian Job 2003. In Venice, the retired safecracker John Bridger, played by Sutherland, contacts his daughter, Stella Bridger, played by Theron, informing her of his decision to partake in his last heist. John then rendezvous with Charlie Croker, played by Wahlberg, before initiating the heist. Their crew comprises Steve, played by Norton, the inside man, Handsome Rob, played by Statham, the getaway driver, Left Ear, played by Def, an explosives expert, and Lyle, played by Green, a technical expert. Although the heist is successful, Steve double-crosses them, taking the gold for himself. He kills John Bridger and leaves the rest of the team for dead. A year later in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Stella utilizes her safe-cracking skills as an assistant to law enforcement, breaking into vaults. The team locates Steve, prompting Charlie to enlist Stella, given her expertise and motivation, to join them in stealing the gold back. The team travels to Los Angeles, California, to surveil Steve's house and plan the heist. Meanwhile, Steve attempts to sell the gold through a money launderer, played by Kurtnog, but ends up killing him when questioned about the gold source. The money launderer happens to be the cousin of a local Ukrainian mafia boss, played by Krupa, who seeks vengeance for his cousin's murder. The initial plan involves setting Steve up on a date with Stella, who poses as a cable repairwoman to access Steve's house and locate his safe. Simultaneously, the team plans to break into Steve's house, load the gold into three Mini Coopers modified by Rob's friend wrench, played by Frankie G, and use hacked traffic lights for their escape. However, due to a local party, witnessing the heist becomes a risk, leading Charlie to call off the plan. To maintain her cover, Stella proceeds with the date, but Steve eventually uncovers her true identity. Charlie then confronts Steve, vowing to recover the stolen gold. Now aware that Charlie and his team are alive, Steve makes preparations to move the gold. He obtains three armored trucks and a helicopter from which to monitor the truck's transit. To counter the shell game, Charlie uses Lyle's control over the Los Angeles traffic system to isolate the one truck containing the gold, which Lyle manages to find, and gridlocks the city. The team then steals the gold from the truck and escapes in their trio of Mini Coopers. Steve and his hired security guards pursue them through Los Angeles, and the team manages to lose them all, except Steve. He follows Charlie, but falls into a trap. Charlie has already informed the Ukrainians that Steve is the person they want, and Charlie gives the Ukrainians a portion of the stolen gold. Steve is taken away by the gangsters, and the team split up the remaining gold and raise a toast to Stella's father as they leave Los Angeles on the coast starlight. During the credits, a series of scenes show what each member of the team does with their portion of the money. Driving through the Alps, thief Roger Beckerman is killed when his car crashes into a bulldozer parked in a tunnel by the Mafia, who dispose of him and his car by pushing it into a nearby river. Meanwhile, his friend and fellow thief Charlie Croker is released from prison, reuniting with his girlfriend Lorna to enjoy his first taste of freedom. Leaving her to meet with Beckerman for a job he was planning in Italy, Croker is shocked to meet his widow instead. She insists he continue her late husband's plan, which he had completed before his death, of an ambitious heist of $4 million in gold bullion from a security convoy intended as a down payment to fiat by China for a car factory. Croker breaks back into prison to ask British nationalist crime lord Mr. Bridger for financial backing. Initially unconvinced, Bridger soon offers support when he learns of the heist's target. With help from Bridger's organization, run by his right-hand man Camp Freddy, Croker recruits a crew of specialists, including Lorna and computer expert Professor Peach, the latter needed for sabotaging Turin's traffic control system. After finalizing preparations, Croker and his team are summoned by Bridger to a fake funeral ceremony, where he informs them that the Mafia killed Beckerman because of his planned heist, advising them to be careful, but not to return without the gold. After leaving for Italy, Croker and some of his crew split off from the others while en route to Turin, to avoid raising suspicion. However, the small group soon encounter the Mafia waiting for them in the Alps, led by their boss Altabani, who destroys their cars. Croker narrowly manages to talk his way out of getting murdered. His crew infiltrate the Turin Traffic Control Center later that night, whereupon Peach replaces one of the computer's magnetic tape data storage reels with a duplicate designed to sabotage Turin's traffic control system on the day of the heist. The next day, as the gold arrives and the crew prepare for the heist, Croker sends Lorna to Geneva to protect her and the plan. At the same time, Peach absconds from the crew, and is later arrested for molesting a woman on a tram. 
With the city's closed circuit television traffic monitoring cameras sabotaged and the Turin traffic control system malfunctioning, a massive traffic jam builds up. The crew swiftly ambush the gold convoy outside the Museo Egizio as it is stalled by the traffic jam. Subduing the police and moving the van inside the building, they divide the gold between the boots of three Mini Coopers. Most of the crew then escape the building disguised as football fans, while Croker leads the rest out of the city in the Minis, going over stairs, pedestrian streets, rooftops and sewers. Following a set route designed by Beckerman, the crew escape from Turin with the gold, and rendezvous with a modified coach to collect the minis before they reach the Alps. Once aboard, the group unload the gold, dispose of the minis in the Alps, and collect the rest of the crew. As Bridger celebrates with his fellow prisoners and prison staff, the coach suddenly loses control and teeters over a cliff, with the gold balancing over the edge. Croker soon contemplates how to save the crew and the gold, which is sliding further away down the vehicle, and claims, hang on a minute, lads, I've got a great idea. No, no, no.